Hi, how you doing today? We're gonna restore this Resando sideboard. So first things first, this needs to be stripped. There's very few repairs. There's some veneers missing along the bottom, but generally it's in not bad shape. It strips quite well. It, when you're talking about restoration, you start structurally and then you start going aesthetically. So we would, if this had doors that weren't working or panels that were broken or you know legs down here that were busted, we would do all of our repairs first. This, we're gonna skip a few repairs because it doesn't need any. And we're gonna go straight on to stripping the finish and repairing the veneers and then go on to doing a whole uh, refinishing aesthetic restoration of this unit. So, well, let's go. I've got my apron, gloves. Uh, I'm using, we're gonna be using a paint stripper. We need methylated spirits and some coarse steel wool. So, key to stripping is making sure that it's wet and keeping it moving. See, it's starting to crystallize. You can start seeing this. This is, it's a beautiful job to strip. Okay, now we're gonna use the methylated spirits. Uh, I'm gonna wash it over with some steel wool. And we're gonna keep repeating. Alrighty, so we have stripped the carcass, we have stripped the doors. The only thing is we are not stripping inside, we're just gonna over polish. These little parts of this unit are, they need stripping, but I don't wanna get it on the inside. But I can see these little screws, so uh, I'm gonna dismantle it a little bit. So I'll try to bring the camera inside the unit so you can get a good look. I'm pretty hopeful it should uh, pop out, but we'll see. Keep pushing. It's kind of interesting when you're pulling this apart. It's a 1950s piece, but you can start seeing the uh, sort of manufacturing process, the machine age getting to a point where this is starting to look internally like um, kitchen cabinets with these little uh, sort of screwed on front edges and everything. It's beautiful, I still really like it, but um, so we see the early, early construction of modern cabinetry. Restorers get to really see uh, the nuts and bolts of how these beautiful things are made. Uh, there's not much left to the imagination. So. You can know a piece by looking at it, observing it, and loving it, and paying for it. But it, uh, it's a different thing to get under the hood. It's kind of fun. This is completely stripped, and the next step, the next order of events is to sand. I'm going to sand it all by hand. The knee is very old and very brittle. I know this stuff, it loves to chip out, uh, it loves to jump off. And it's actually prepared very nicely. Um, it's, it's been sanded quite well and it's stripped quite well so we haven't lifted too much of the grain so it's actually still in really good nick really good condition so standing straight lines 240 
All right, so on the bench, we've got uh, one of the doors. I've already given this a sand, a strip and a sand, and this is uh, gone through 180 sandpaper, 240, and this is 400. I've already done this, but I'm just uh, making sure before we coat it up, and I'll dust it off, that it's all nice and even. All right, it's sanded, cleaned. We're gonna do something a little kooky. That's why I kind of wanted to show you this. And we're gonna repeat the same uh, process on uh, every door. I'm gonna use the orange shellac on the darker timber and I'm using a blonde de-waxed shellac on uh, this lighter part. So the carcass we've been doing this with the orange shellac, so, and it looks great. Like this, uh, this timber comes up looking beautifully with this, like a nice, gentle, to hinting or to the uh, hewing that this uh, brown shellac gives dark timbers. Brown shellac, I sort of alternate between calling it brown shellac and orange shellac. Okay, now we're gonna use this blonde, different brush. Nice even first coat. You want it to almost look like there's nothing on there. It's just highlighting the grain. There's not many streaks, no pulling, no runs. And we'll paper that back, get it flat, and start rubbing. See, as you catch that light, we're trying to just keep it looking natural. You know, there's not many brush strokes around here, especially once we paper it. You want it really. Even here you can see the laminates. It's the underside of the doors are the veneers. So you can sort of see how they're made. You can see how thin the veneers are in here. That's one. Here we're going to give it a quick sand with 1200 paper, which is really, really fine sandpaper, and we're going to do some French polishing. This is really just skimming it across, getting rid of any dust or some sort of... You can cause brush marks if you're not really even, or you can, even when you're rubbering, you cannot overlap as nicely as you'd like, so... Doing this smooth in between every sort of coat once it goes dry. So you apply coats of shellac, as you'll see in a minute. And as they dry, we give them a nice paper, do it all again, do it all again, keep flattening, keep polishing, keep flattening and keep polishing. Don't necessarily brush this on, you usually put this into some shellac, but uh, it's kind of hard to do while showing it. So brushing on for now. It's already quite well charged. It's getting a bit in there. I don't have time to go through how we do all of this. This is a whole nother video of how to wrap and roll a shellac rubber, and I'm sure there's many videos out there on YouTube of how to wrap and roll one of these rubbers. But you don't want a nice point nice and firm and you want something that fits your hands. This is how we French polish. Again, it's all about this charge, how much we're loading it. Quite a bit of your hands, so. I use gloves. thing about the sides are uh, not rolling anything over the top. You can see I'm sort of scooching off them and relieve the pressure a bit as well so we don't push any thin shellac onto the top and strip it. Ooh.
So here we're using an oil and turps mix. It's 50% linseed oil and 50% pure gum turps. We are papering it on, sort of sanding it on using 1200 sandpaper, and then we move it up to just cotton wadding, and then we buff it off completely. And so here we're just going back and forth, back and forth with this uh, linseed oil mix. You can just use a wax as well. I just wanted a really, really subtle, subdued shine. Uh, the battle here is to get something full, so the grain is completely full, but we don't want it shiny and glossy, and that's where the linseed oil mix is really good at dulling things off and flattening it off really nicely. Leaving it a full timber, but not a big, shiny, glossy monstrosity. Sun, where are my eyes? <laughs> you want to go? This is part of the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> 